seminar, Michael Geiger will tell us about the issue of Fermi crystals. Fermi crystals. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk here at Center for Theoretical Physics. I checked it last time. I had such an opportunity, I don't know, seven years ago. So today I'm going to talk about something very simple. So the talk will be devoted to ideal Fermi gas. So you might be surprised that I am trying to talk about something so trivial to this distinguished audience. Uh, because this is the topic that I probably should be talking to some high school kids. But Christmas are coming and this will be a kind, I hope, of entertainment for you. So, all my talk, th this is the work that we've done together in a group of Jaich Mostowski, with Jaich Mostowski, Tomek Sowinski and Magda Rauska kotur and, and the main result of, 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 of my talk will be uh, uh, okay, I, I will tell you how, how the picture of the grand state of the uh, Fermi gas looks like. So, I will start with something very, very important, that, but I don't want to, to sound that I am touching some, some foundations of quantum mechanics, but I have to remind that because I will be talking about ideal Fermi gas, all the story will be about the indistinguishability of particles. So this is the, the, the main issue of my talk and I want to say that in quantum mechanics indistinguishability has much more important consequences than in classical physics. In classical physics we can also have indistinguishable objects like, like I don't know, two identical twins or, or maybe two identical, identical manufactured cars. However, we can distinguish them by tracing the history. And this is an example that I show, for instance, I don't know, two cars approaching the intersection and both are turning uh, right. Is there any pointer? Yes. Yes. So there are two cars and both are turning right and, and okay. left. Left. No. This is left and this is right. Okay, correct. So left. Uh, that's true. From, from the driver perspective left, but we can distinguish which is which by tracing the history. When we are on the ground of quantum mechanics, we have Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we don't have trajectory, so we cannot identify objects by tracing the trajectory, so if they were a quantum particles, uh, when they are somewhere in the region of intersection, uh, the wave functions overlap, we cannot tell which is which. In these two situations, when one is when both are turning right or left, are totally uh, undistinguishable. We cannot tell which car going from this direction or this direction. Yes, that, that's which way a good right. argument during small collisions. Mm -hmm. This is small collisions. <laughs> yes. So, 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 so I want to say that this indistinguishability, indistinguishability of particles is, is very important and in fact when we want when when we want to describe many body theory and we want to have this this, this full relativistic many body theory I mean uh, also which which uh, uh, fulfills the, the, the causality principle, then, then we have to, to talk about quantum fields and, and then this quantum mechanics, uh, indistinguishability, indistinguishability of identical objects and, 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 and uh, relativistic invariance leads to uh, two possibilities only. The field operators can either commute or anti-commute. So this divides the work of elementary particles into two classes. And when we go back to non-relativistic theory, when we can use the wave function of many particles, this commutation or anti-commutation relations results in the symmetry of the wave function. So, so there are these two classes of, of, of particles. Uh, <coughs> there is the one class which, which, is the, which are particles with integer spin and the wave function of, of, of such uh, particles 
uh, is symmetric with respect to exchange of any two particles. And there is the second family, which is which are fermions, particles with half integer spin, and the wave function is anti-symmetric when we exchange two particles. This way the probability, which is the observable, does not depend on which particle is which. So, so, so this way this indistinguishability is taken into account. What we measure shouldn't depend on the numbering of particles. So we have these this two families of particles. I will talk mainly, or mostly, almost only. Maybe I will make one remark or two remarks about bosons, but my talk will be about fermions, fermi Dirac statistics, and the situation when the will be on the, the non-relativistic limit, I have n body wave function, and the total wave function is anti-symmetric with respect of any two particles. Uh, I will omit spin here. So I will assume that the fermions are spinless, or the spin, they are polarized, they, 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 the spin is frozen, all of them are facing in the same direction. Just short uh, historical remark, that this concept of, of, of uh, uh, undistinguishability, we, okay, I, I said about the, the modern formulation of, of, of the uh, undistinguishability, but, but historic, historically it was Wolfgang Pauli in 1925 who introduced the Pauli exclusion principle, which is another way of saying that the total wave function of identical fermions has to be anti-symmetric. The Pauli exclusion principle was invented in order to explain the, the periodic table of elements, then also spin was required, and in this way uh, Pauli formulated that principle that there is only one, part, one electron in a one single particle state. So there is one particle per one state. So that was historically how, how the Pauli principle was invented and now I will have this short remark that about bosons also because we have these two kinds of realizations of indistinguishability of particles. One is this bosonic uh, and the second is the fermionic uh, realization. Uh, for bosons, the ground state, so this is the main clue of my talk. I am going to, to talk about the ground state of the fermions, and this is this is this is the main result. I would like to say. So, so bosons. This seems to be boring. All of them are sitting in the same state, and they behave like one collective object. It was it took a lot of time to realize an experiment such a ground state of bosons, and these are nowadays called Bose-Einstein condensates with ultra-cold atoms and, and so on. So, so people made a lot of effort to get into this boring ground state where everybody looks the same. And this is the ground state of identical fermions. This is one decade. So we see one fermion per one state. And this is what we can read in every textbook about many body cases. We have fermions. They are one of the top of each other. This, large, this highest energy which is occupied with this is Fermi energy and, and this is called Fermi C and then you can study excitation. So everything is known when particles are not interacting. Provided that we know the single particle wave functions and energies, we can construct everything and we know everything. So, so this is how, how we think about identical fermions. But what I want to say, sorry, chance too fast uh, and uh, it's to answer the question this is the picture in the energy space but uh, we can ask ourselves a question how will the system of identical fermions say in harmonic trap look like if we take a picture of this system uh, we know that bosons are identical they see the ground state so let us start with simple example of two particles. 
you look at harmonic oscillator, and this is ground state, felt excited state, state etc. And this is probability distribution of finding particle at the given state. So for the ground state, it is Gaussian wave function picked here. And let us assume that we have two particles at, and we somehow put one particle in the ground state and the second particle in the excited state. In one dimension? In one dimension. It could be only one dimension? No. 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 The example okay. will be only one dimension, well, but then I will make more effort in, and I will go to higher dimensions also. So we can put the wave function of two distinguishable particles doesn't have to have any symmetry. It can be symmetric or anti-symmetric, doesn't matter. So let us assume that there is a simple product. We can put one particle here, the second particle, if it has to be in the excited state, there are two maxima can be either at this position or at this position. That's what we could naively think, but, but in order to find where they are, we can square this wave function and, and find the probability distribution. And we can ask ourselves the question, where is the maximum of this distribution? Of course, uh, when we take a single picture of the system, the two particles can be anywhere. Because quantum mechanics is a probabilistic theory, it allows to predict only probabilities. So the probabilities have to be selected according to this, to this distribution function. So they can be, in principle, anywhere. However, when we repeat the experiment many, many times, we can select these pictures which emerge more frequently the, than others. And we can ask what is the most frequently appearing picture in, in our collection of, of pictures. And then we ask about the maximum of this probability. And we find the maximum, which is a simple function of two variables and, and students can do it. We find that maximum is that one particle is at zero, this one which is in the ground state, and the second can be either here or there. So sometimes we will get pictures. The most probable pictures will be these two particles, one at the center, the second to the right, or it can be equally frequent uh, situation when the second particle will be here to the left. So, so that's what we can expect when we take a lot of pictures. Now let us look what is the role. This is not really the maximum of this function. This is Why? Because you are looking for not I'm looking for the maximum. I just take but the maximum means that you are looking for the maximum of a given function. But here you are having a selection of different functions, and you find the function which appears most often. I no. have I have one function which is probably you already defined the function. I define the function like this. This is the ground state and this is the state. I assume so that I put particles here. I I have very smart experimentator who helps me and he put this particle there. And then the question is, this is a very well posed mathematical question, this yeah, function of two variables, well, does it have maximum or it has, or if it has, to, to find the position of the maximum. So I differentiate this function with respect to x1, uh -huh. x2, and, and then I have maximum. So this is the maximum of the probability. I say, okay, in, in any realization I will get this particles at the maximum, because this is continuous probability distribution, so probability of finding particles at a given point is zero. But if I have a lot of pictures, I can probably notice that the, the most frequent ones are such pictures where these two particles are separated by some distance. One is at the center of the trap, and second is here or there. That, that's so there are two maxima. There are two maxima. Yeah. Of course, I can somehow. Yes. Uh, if I forget about the correspondence principle? No. I mean, if I have a classical particle, classical yeah. pendulum, right? Yes. With a given energy. It's either yes. on the left or the right, and they are not distinguishable by symmetry of the potential. Yes. yes. So yes. That, is, that is the correspondence yes. principle. Yes. And it exactly. is for beauty. Exactly. But, but in order to have. Yeah, so but 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 okay, not in, not in the harmonic oscillator yeah. potential. You have pendulum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if you take a picture, the most time they spend is, is at the turning point, and that's probably will be the most frequent outcome of of, of such pictures. Yes. Yeah. That's the correspondence. Okay. Okay. 
So, and now the most interesting case, the case that I will spend all of my time, is, oh, sorry, first bosons. For bosons, I have to symmetrize this problem. So the function is slightly different, so now, I, now I'm discussing the role of the symmetry. I can also square this wave function, find the maximum of the probability distribution, and then find also two maxima. The particles, x position of particles are the same, so they sit at the same position. I shifted them somehow because if I put one uh, uh, square on the top of the other, you might think that I, I have only one particle. So there are two, they sit either at position 1 over square root of 2 in harmonic oscillator units, or they can sit over there, both. So this is example of kind of both enhancement. The particles cluster together, they want to sit together. This is the most probable configuration. Of course, there are plenty of them, and, and, but the most probable is the one when they are together, and not here at the center, but, but surprisingly somewhere to the right or to the left. And now comes the question of fermions. This is the only difference. There is the sign which changed. Okay? And then when we square and we find the maximum because of this of this minus sign, we see that position that particles avoid each other. If one is here, the second is there. So there are some correlations imposed by 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 indistinguishable litter of particles, which, which is manifested here by Pauli exclusion principle. And, and maybe it's not very surprising because sometimes or very often the Pauli exclusion principle is viewed as a kind of strange repulsion. This is a kind of repulsion, particles avoid each other and this is some additional term that one has to include in all these uh, calculations of energies in anybody physics. So once more, just to summarize, for bosons, for fermions, the wave function of two identical fermions must be anti-symmetric. This is an example of two particles in one D. And from this condition, we clearly see that two fermions cannot be found simultaneously at the same position. Because it must be anti-symmetric when we exchange them, so the only probability solution is that probability of finding two fermions at the same point is zero. So I just summarize this, this introduction. Fermions don't like to stay together. This is everything which is what is known. Now I will jump to a more complicated problem. Not much, but I have n particles. This figure might suggest that I am in one dimension. No, this is just for simplicity of notation. Uh, the wave function of, so we, I can put one fermion on the top of each other. The ground state is, is such that, that the lowest states are populated up to the fermion energy. And the wave function of, and what the wave function is given by a slater determinant. The probability of distribution of particles, of finding them at given positions, is square of the determinant. So now I can ask similar question. Yes. If this probability has maximum and well, how does maximum look like? So what I will get if I take a picture of, of such n body system and if I repeat this procedure many times, I will collect a collection of single shot pictures. And if I start to look carefully at this collection of single shot pictures, do I see consequences of this Pauli principle and, and, and how, how how the picture will look like. So the question is right now maximum of this probability distribution. And now some technical slide because I will consider two-dimensional harmonic oscillator and and I have the the expression for the wave function, single particle wave function and for the energy which is sum of two quantum numbers. And of course, I'm, I'm talking about this because there is a problem when the Fermi energy doesn't form the closed shell. If in two dimensions, I have degeneracy, so I have to decide where to put particles. Okay? And I will just take some kind of order. And I will be considering two. For closed shell, the probability is 
the, the ground state is uniquely defined for open shell that is degeneracy. I, I will select one of the degenerate states, so I will be not very general, I will show some particular example, and of course I can use different phases, this is Cartesian phases, and this is uh, cylindrical phases, and, and because there is degeneracy I can I will be using these two to show some similar similarity or to show some, some collection of pictures which, which look nice. So for not closed shells uh, there will be difference because I will be using different different states. Ground state is degenerate and I will show which I will use. I will assume if I have closed shells I will assume that first excitations do the, not have closed shells. If, if if I have an open shells, I will I will assume that trap frequency in the x direction is by epsilon smaller than the trap frequency in the y direction. It means that slightly lower energy will have states which have uh, a lot of excitation quanta in the x direction. With this uh, cylindrical basis or angular momentum basis, I will assume n is azimuthal quantum number, I will uh, assume that the, then I have another symmetry, I have this rotational symmetry, I have right-handed and left-handed state, and I will assume that this which are, which n is positive, they have slightly lower energy. So is, it is uh, as if I add to Hamiltonian a small term, breaking the symmetry of degenerate uh, states, assuming that the states which rotate uh, in the positive direction have slightly smaller energy. So this is just technical remark about the ordering of the state and this is table for Cartesian coordinates. These are an X and an Y quantum number, this ground state, then this, this one particle there is no ambiguity. For two particles I can put one here and one here around the X direction of one here and one here, excitation and y direction, I will choose this for two, for three there is closed shells, for four I will take this four, five this five, and six, six is closed. Okay, so this is just to, to show what I am going to show in the pictures. Now I, I look for the, if I have the ground state, I already selected the state, I know how to build the slates and the terminal, which state I use there, and then I, I, I find the probability distribution in, in particle configuration space and I look numerically for the extremum, for the maximum of this probability using Monte Carlo algorithm, which is maybe stupid but, but, but uh, good enough for this problem. So uh, I start with some configuration of n particle, I find the probability there and I move them randomly to another position. If probability is larger than I am happy and I move there, uh, and I and I repeat this procedure, and if I cannot find anything better, I I, I feel satisfied, and I say this is my maximum of the probability. And now let us look for this maximal configurations of these two particles. It's not surprising; I already told that they don't stay at one position, and they are along the x direction because that's the ground state they choose, with one point of excitation in the x direction. But now three particles, and this is for Cartesian phases and this is for angular momentum basis. With the ordering that I explained, this is closed shell, so there is no any difference. This is, this, the ground state is unique, so whatever basis I chose to be the same wave function. So we see that, that the three particles also tend to avoid each other and they form a, a triangle, a equilateral triangle, four particles. This Angular momentum basis prefers such symmetric, I would say, some, some equal distance to the center uh, positions. Why the basis when I choose different ground state, in fact, well, with the excitation in the, along the x direction, then this, this direction is somehow distinguished. And five particles. Yeah, because of the symmetry breaking, the values of the maximum are not the same for you. Yes, this is different different function. This is different function. Mm -hmm. so I find maximum of different functions. It's different n variable functions. Because so it's a different Hamiltonian in two cases. In some sense, yes. 
Yeah. Or if, if, if I put this epsilon zero, the Hamiltonian will be the same, but no. out of the generality, I choose some yeah. wave function for this later determinant. I right? could choose any combination or whatever. I choose some particular combination. So it, is, it shows that, that this really depends on how the generality is. is, okay. is yes. Awesome. yes, yes. So it, it depends. I, for instance, I can use unharmonic oscillator and break the degeneracy, making this x direction uh, a bit more, uh, less uh, energetic. Still so harmonic oscillator. Still harmonic, but not an isotropic. Not I want to be happy with the isotropic because I think it is nice, more general. If I start to break the symmetry, then there is a question, what is the aspect ratio and how does it depend on the aspect ratio, etc. So I wanted to avoid this question. So this is a some some ground states chosen out of a, for for open shells out of a generate collection of ground states. It is five particles, and we see something like this. Like that. These are the maxima of the wave function of the probability square, square of the wave function. Yes, yes. And uh, the values of these maxima are different in different. They, they are different, of course. They are different. So one of them is really the maximum, and the remaining ones are no. not. No, no, there is no. not any. I never found any isomers, say so, any local maximum. maxima. For when, once I define the function, yes. maximum is unique. That is my experience with numeric. So, my However, maximum there is different function for four particles. It's the value of the. There's not much point in comparing because it's it's I, I never compare them. They, they, they don't have to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the system doesn't have freedom to choose this yes. or this. It depends on the symmetry of the the If the system had freedom to then, of course, it would choose the largest maximum, I would say. This would be the most prominent. But system has no this freedom. This is my will that I decided I take this function, and then I, I believe that in experiment they are able to select by breaking the symmetry in the way that I expect to make this right-handed states less energetic than the left-handed, or slightly anisotropic harmonic oscillator. So, so this is unique for a given ground state. This is six particles. This is again closed shell. We have nice ordered structure. And, and this is that will depend on the basis because the wave function is the same. I can expand the wave function in Helmut polynomials on the line of the seven. You see that the symmetry is I will comment on it soon, but, but this is, for instance, the situation that I can, I can bring your attention, that evidently it must be another maximum where this, say, R row is directed in this way, okay? So here we have several maxima, and I will be talking about this, the generacy of the configurations of max, maximizing the probability for the rest of my talk, if I have time. This is eight particles, nine, ten is again closed shell. We see that there are second shell formed with triangles inside and seven particles at the outer shell. And these are these closed shells. I added here 15 particles, again closed shell, one, five, and nine particles. So we see very nice ordered structures of this of this maxima. Now I have to make a comment, I still have half an hour, because because people who know me, they, 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 they know that my PhD was related to such ordered structures, which were crystals of ions in a trap. So, so, so probably I would never come to the idea of this ordered structure if not my previous experience when we were working with, with Professor Mostowski on Coulomb crystals. Such ordered structures of few particles are very well known in physics. There are several examples, and I will start with that trapped ions, uh, because we might think that this, this is very similar geometry, for instance, for, for the ordered structure that we call Pauli crystals, because they result out of Pauli uh, principle, exclusion principle. This, these crystals, are, they result from interaction. So these are charged particles, ions, which are in harmonic trap, and they repeal uh, because of, of Coulomb repulsion. So there are two tendencies. One is this external potential which wants to, in order to minimize the energy, to bring all particles to the very uh, bottom of, of the trap, and then they cannot be there because they repeal by Coulomb forces. So there is some extremum somewhere, and this, these are called 
cunul crestans, which, 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 which uh, are configurations which uh, minimize the energy. This is coulomb energy and this is harmonic oscillator energy. So we've been looking with Jasmin Mostowski for such, such configuration. So this is the paper which was published 30 years ago uh, in Acta Physica Polonica, where we predicted how this, this, this ion structures look like. Okay, and this is even for more particles. And, and then it was confirmed in the experiment two years later. One was Dave Wineland Group in Boulder, Colorado. And the second was Herbert Walter Group. They were two papers published simultaneously in the history of letter. It was back-to-back -back papers uh, about about this. This and, and, and one and group was even able to cite the Acta Physica paper. I I, I met uh, John Bollinger at the conference this year, and I asked him how come that they found this paper. You know? Now it is not possible because it is in library, so it is not available. <laughs> because you cannot Google it. <laughs> At this time, people were, were going to the library and they found it somehow. They don't know how, how they found it. So, okay, this is some... some because I, I want to compare the structures to this to this uh, Coulomb the crystal, so that's why I made this remark, to show that they are similar, or, or because it was the very immediate question to ask if these Pauli structures are very similar to this. Coulomb crystals, and the Coulomb crystals have the same geometry as famous Wigner crystals. Wigner wrote a paper on the ground state of electrons in metal, and he predicted that in the limit of very low density, okay, we have we are in the quantum mechanic ground, and let us assume that, that, that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is somehow uh, valid in the ground state, so, so the spreading of the wave function of electrons is related to its momentum, so it is h bar over, over a, which is distance. So we, we notice that, 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 that potential energy of Coulomb interaction goes to zero with, with distance between particles like 1 over a, and kinetic energy, when we assume this Heisenberg uncertainty principle, goes to zero like 1 over a squared. So, at very low densities, you know, the, the, the ground state is given by the minimum of, of the potential energy, which is Coulomb energy, and these electrons are immersed in the neutral, neutralizing uh, background of, 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 uh, of, of positive ions, so, so, so which, which act like this uh, harmonic potential, on average. Therefore, it's very similar or even the same structures I expect for Wigner crystals, which are very hard to observe, but there are some observations on electrons uh, which are immersed on two-dimensional liquid helium. There are very nice pictures. They are very hard to, to observe, and this, this I will tell you why. Of course, this is and this is and this is comparison. Here I have these Pauli crystals. The colors in the background is single particle density. So this is just the single particle density which can be obtained by adding squares of wave functions contributing to the Slater determinant. So this is this Gaussian plus first excited, second, etc. When we add all of them, this way we will get single particle density. If we integrate over all particles but one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mathematically, if you want to do it, you have to take Slater determinant, integrate then over n minus one, and you will get this. And then you will discover that the analytic formula is sum of the square of single particle orbitals after this integration. Yes. So this is something that we will get if we take picture of one particle at a time and collect them many times. And, but this is something that you might notice if you take simultaneous pictures of all of particles. Mm -hmm. So you see it's not easy to recognize what is the structure having a collection of single particle uh, pictures. So these are, these are uh, Pauli crystals and these are Wigner crystals. And we see that the geometry is different. Here I have seven particles and this is the same, but for eight particles, this Wigner crystal has one particle in the, in the center, while the Pauli crystal has two, three. And, and, and I want to say that these shells have nothing to do with energy shells of the single particle Hamilton. There is not such simple 
one-to-one -one correspondence, then when one, one shell is closed, then we have one geometric shell, and then the second is closed, then we have second geometric shell, etc. So, the clue is that these are totally different crystals. This is, this is even more 15 particles, and we see that there is a pentagon inside. Uh, here we have also pentagon, but also one in the center, so at the outer shell we have different number of particles. If you would not break the symmetry, then of course you would get a smooth distribution. There will be no distinguished points. There are no. I I break I broke the symmetry by epsilon here. Yes. This is the measurement which breaks the symmetry. It's not me. It's just simple realization. If you look for one realization of any body state, then you break symmetry. When you pick up one particle there, then you somehow decide where will be the next and so on. Then there are some correlations. So every time when I select at random, say if I would select at random 15 particles, I would get them. Let us assume that they will be very close to the maximum. And here I have the rotational symmetry. I have the symmetry and I, I, I will come to this problem just in a second because it will be the crucial problem. But, the, but this is the measurement which breaks the symmetry. This is not because I added epsilon, because I added epsilon in order to select the order in order, and then I, I, I set this epsilon to zero. When no, I but, but when epsilon is zero, then it, you have rotational symmetry, yes. and yes. these points can be anywhere. Can be anywhere. I will come somewhere. So, this is the question. First of all, I, uh, I showed that there are some very nice ordered structures in the grand state of, of N, uh, identical fermions. However, similarly like with Wigner crystal, and this is the problem with Wigner crystal in observation, that these are quantum objects, so, so there is quantum uncertainty, there is quantum fluctuations. So it means that we cannot predict the outcome of any measurement exactly, but we can say what is the probability. So from one measurement to the other, we will get totally different uh, pictures. We will get points which are located, <laughs> as Professor Gajewinski, in a totally different position. Not only because there is symmetry, but also because th this is quantum mechanics and uh, we have quantum uncertainty and we have quantum fluctuation. And this is the reason why Wigner crystals are very hard to observe because, because the electrons are not classical objects. They are described in this limit, whatever, it is not in this limit, but in the limit of dilute gas, by the widely spread wave functions. And, uh, and, and when one wants to take a picture, they will be here or there or in another position. Here it will be the same. So the, the question, which is the most important, this is very nice curiosity of, of the and, uh, ideal fermions, but is it possible to really observe, do these crystals, these power crystals exist, or is this only as a maximum of probability? So the question is, is the quantum fluctuations destroy the structures or not? So how we can check it? Oh, the only way is to make a collection of pictures to take ensemble of such realizations of the grand state, okay? There are many realizations, and if we have a lot of them, uh, we can find the one which are the most frequent. So, so we can take a histogram and to look if there is this maximum in this histogram and if the maximum resembles these ordered structures or not. So first this technical slide, how to generate the collection of n points out of the n-body probability distribution. There are different ways for sure. <coughs> we choose some Monte Carlo algorithm that we, it is a way of selecting an ensemble of, 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 of realizations provided that, that, that the probability is given. So if we have one member of the ensemble, we randomly move to new configuration and if this new configuration is the configuration of larger probability, we accept this to the ensemble. If the probability of new configuration is smaller, then we flip a coin and we design with probability which is given by the ratio of this probability and this new one. This is exactly the Metropolis algorithm. And we take this new representative with this probability by flipping the coin and, and, and we stay at the same uh, configuration 
with probability 1 minus this ratio. This way we generate such Markov walk in the configuration space. I generate something like 2 million or even something of, of such realizations. And I have collection of these pictures and I can, okay, this is once more, this is my Markov walk. And this is what I get. This is an example of six particles. So I take a collection of these pictures, six particles at given time. I put them, I add them and I, 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 I calculate histogram. Obviously, there is nothing there. Why? Because there is a single particle distribution. If I add, this is the same, if I have six particles, I can take only the first one, and first of all, make histogram of the first particle, then I can make a histogram of the second particle, which is exactly the same because particles are indistinguishable, so, so there is no any mathematical difference in the formula for, for, for the second particle. And I add six histograms for one particle and I get histogram of n particle distribution which looks like that and clearly there is no any structure, no any geometry there. Why it is so? This is because the geo this, this maximum of probability is not one configuration but there is the generacy because we have the symmetry of the potential which is axial symmetry in this two-dimensional case so there is no any angle which is distinguished so from one picture to the other maybe we get the six particles which form very beautiful I don't know pentagon or hexagon I don't remember at this moment the pentagon with one in the center but this pentagon from one picture to the other is slightly rotated okay so if I'm stupid and I add this picture then I don't recognize anything. It is the same if I would like to recognize a picture of somebody I know, taking a collection of pictures which are slightly rotated and maybe slightly deformed because, you know, somebody smiles or, or cries, whatever, but I see that this is... But by looking at the simple picture, I see that this is, this is Professor Kush who is not sleeping even. <laughs> but but if, I, if I took a collection of pictures and I start to rotate them and I add everything, that I don't see anything. So the idea is the idea is not to create the single particle histogram, but before calculating histogram correlators to correlate the outcome. So if I know that different outcomes differ by some symmetry operations, then I can try to apply the symmetry operations to the outcomes in order to correlate them. In, order, in other words, when I have a picture of somebody and I have the picture upside down, I should rotate it. Maybe I should shift it somehow. So all operations which are isometric, don't change distances and angles, are a lot, and I can try with all these operations and, 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 and get, and then add all these pictures and then produce a histogram, and then the question is if I see something or not. So this, here I will show what I do. This is the pattern that I want to recognize. This is three particles, and I know that this is the pattern, and, and my single single shot gives me the three points, and looking simply like that, I see there is there is no any similarity. So first of all, I will shift it to the to have the center of mass at zero. Because that's what I did with this configuration. So I am shifting that to have the center of mass at zero, and then I try to rotate them, and then I see oh when I shift and rotate, I see it fits quite well. It's not so bad. I will go backwards. I can something like this, and then I see. Okay, this is this is similar. I can do it with 15 particles. So then we develop such algorithm. So and we are trying to. And I will show the pictures till the end of my talk. I will be showing pictures which are correlated this way. So this is two particles, and this is sing single particle distribution. The single particle distribution already shows. We broke the symmetry. X axis is. Is, is distinguished, there is no rotational symmetry, so we see two maxima. However, when we take each single realization and shift them to the center of mass, to, to have center of mass at zero, we can purify this picture, and that's what we see here. I get this picture from this, taking every single picture, shifting, calculating the center of mass, and putting the center of mass to zero. And then we see clearly these two particles which are separated. Would you not get the same if you calculated the 
average distance between the mean average distance, I will have the distribution of distances, which in two yes. particles will tell me everything. However, of course, of course, this is known that that this fiddle of oscillation or something, when you have many particles, you can calculate the, 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 the distance, and you will see that there are some distances which are better, like, like these shells. Of course, you will see, but you will, in the, here you see some kind of n-body geometry, yes. which is more than distance. Distance tells you a lot. This is for two particles, but then when you take so three... Distance tells you already uh, quite a lot. Yes. Yes. I agree. Histogram of distances will tell you a lot about the structure, but you never know. In other words, for instance, even for two particles, you can have three maxima because sometimes they are there or sometimes they are there. So if you have three maxima, in other words, a lot of this information is, of course, in high order correlation. Yes, yes. yes, but this is much nicer. This is much nicer. And I want to say that even if you see, for instance, for four particles, that there are four, in single particles, that there are four distinguished points, you know, if you have distances and you see some this you never know if this if this is one part particle in the potential which has four minima or if there are four particles which are sitting in the if you have additional information but, but 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 of course it, it gives you a hint but 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 the proof is when you look in the geometry so this is two particles now I go to three particles so I want to say that this is one particle distribution calculated from analytic formula, I know, and this is one particle distribution but conditional, provided that the center of mass of all the three particles is set to zero. This way I subtract the uncertainty of the center of mass position. The Gaussian of the center of mass is subtracted, so I will, I will be showing very often this, so it is almost one particle distribution but not really. This is one particle conditional uh, distribution obtained from n particle distribution with center of mass set to, set to zero. So now I want to say that so these are three atoms and this is what I get from histogram of so single particle distribution subtracting center of mass and I would like to recognize such pattern that, that this is nothing else but plenty of triangles slightly rotated. So I do this procedure, this is our algorithm and I get this. So it's not bad because we can recognize the pattern in this noise. And then, four atoms, this is again particular for geometry along the, uh, uh, along the x direction, and this is one particle distribution. This is the same with center of mass set to zero. Here, it's not so beautiful, the zero at the center. It's only a case of few particles. And then I want to recognize this. So I do this rotations, and that's what I get. Okay, when I remove this, what I was looking for, it looks like this. So this is this correlated histogram of, of, of geometric distribution. So this, and this is five atoms. Five atoms are very, very strange. This is one particle density from analytic formula that is generated, generated by the Monte Carlo uh, algorithm of Metropolis. And, and what we are looking for? We are looking for this geometry, and we do the rotations. Looks like this. Of course, there is another geometry which is reflected with respect to the x-axis. So this is the second with this light blue point. So if I assume that I am fitting to this pattern, I assume the algorithm is such that I assume that I, I know what I am looking for. So if I assume this, I will get the second, with the same data point, but I will rotate in different way in order to fit to this configuration. And this is six atoms. Okay, again, one particle, one particle generated from, from Metropolis algorithm. This is configurations I am looking for, and this is like this. You see, this is rotation, you even see rotation when I do it fast. Some rotations of all these single configurations and, and correlating them with this, and I will be faster. How much time do I have? Almost the end, so it is okay. Seven atoms. Seven atoms is difficult because, because the symmetry is not really rotational symmetry, and I'm not using all symmetries of the uh, 
the algorithm is simple. I should use also inversions, uh, reflections, and other symmetries of, you know, to, to, to find the best, to, to correlate in the best way. So seven is like this. Maybe it is a failure of the algorithm, but not really big. And this is eight atoms. Eight atoms you always almost see in the single particle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here it is okay. You you could even in single particles, that's what you said, that sometimes looking at distances mm -hmm. or this, you, you can you can see, but you never know, I, I want to repeat it. If it is one particle which has eight minima or it is really eight particles. So well, I, I am looking for this for this pattern in, in these pictures and I rotate them and I get this. So this is eight particles. Nine. With nine is not so simple, you don't see that this is nine. You see de definitely two and some some cloud, fuzzy cloud of, 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 of atoms. That that's that's how in fact that's the that people visualize the, the Bohr atom, plotting such a fuzzy probabilities on some smear around some orbit. Okay, we pose the question: How 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 would the picture of, of many electron atom look like? Also, well defined picture. Uh, good question. So this is nine atoms, and this is after recognition of the pattern. 10. 10 is nice because it's closed shell and this is universal. So this is one particle distribution, this is the pattern that I am looking for, and I rotate it. Yeah, you see that, 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 that definitely there is 10. And 15, another closed shell. You, you will notice that the, the similarly like with Wigner crystals, that outer shells are not so clearly visible and they start to melt. So these crystals are visible you see, there are, maybe on the screen the contrast is slightly better, but, but there are some maxima here, but, but the outer shell starts to melt. So, so this is typical also for Wigner crystals, so, so here it is much faster. So, so definitely if you want to observe these public crystals, it's possible only with small number of others, which is not bad. Okay, now, now more pictures, and I will be faster. We did also calculations for different potential, just to check whether this is unique for harmonic potential. We, we believe that this is very general. So this is the potential of the infinite walls. Uh, uh, on, so, so, so this is square well, typical square well, with cosine and sine function vanishing at the uh, end of the, the uh, potential. So this, this is the this particle is distribution with center of mass shifted to zero. Center of mass does not separate for box potential, mm -hmm. it is only for harmonic potential. So for harmonic potential we expected that if configuration has center of mass shifted from zero, because there is some distribution of the center of mass positions, then the shape does not change. So shifting it to zero was just operation which was painless. Here, there is a coupling of the center of mass to the relative motion, so the configurations which are shifted from zero are probably slightly deformed, but not much. Shifting to zero again helps in rotations because it's good to have rotation around the center of mass, so we check that it helps in purifying the, the picture. So we and also it. rotations are not symmetric operations. They are not symmetric. They are I used to also, right. also inversions. But rotation, surprisingly, because Ooh. 100 pi is also uh, two inversions, so they are also not bad. It was so my surprise. It's a rectangular well, not, yeah. not a round well. Yeah. No, 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 this, this, is, the, this is the shape of the well. And potential okay. is but infinite is here, and it is zero so, inside. Yes, so to compare it with the previous case, you would need a round well. Which is yes, 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 with Bessel, yes, yes, that's a very good uh, idea, we, we are thinking, this is, this is three particles, this is the configuration which maximizes the body probability, and this is after rotations or inversions, this is four particles, you don't have to do anything, and I didn't do anything, I just took this, because you see, you see clearly four particles and any kind of operations don't change anything. Five particles is very similar to what we had for harmonic oscillator. Again, such a binocular, whatever. 
And then the case, in the case of harmonic oscillator, this particle was here. Now it is shifted. And this, this, this was done by rotations up to 180 degrees. And, and, and that's how it does it look like. And this is more particles, and then you see that the geometry of the square starts to be visible for larger number of particles. This is six particles. Again, the same for very similar to what we had for harmonic oscillators. This is seven, one in the center, and, here, and this is eight. And you see this single particle distribution. And it reminds, reminds the configuration, and nothing much better can be done by any operations which could correlate the outcomes. But, but it is different for larger number of particles. For instance, 10 or 15. It's hard to say that you have triangle here what we see, like this. So, so for instance, the, the configuration which maximizes the probability, the particles do not sit at the maxima of this one particle distribution. One, one might naively think that it will be one, two, three, four, and maybe some, I don't know, six here or whatever. No, there are three there, not necessarily at the maximum. For instance, this, there is maybe slightly small, but and it is even better visible in these 15 particles when you see really the square geometry in a single particle and you have square here you might think, okay, there are four particles there and, and, and 11 there, no there is this triangle, this, 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 this this triangular lattice is somehow distinguished here by, by the Pauli-Turing principle and this shows that these are in fact three particles which are smart around the circle somehow, why, why the maxima are not so high like here, but, but when it comes to recognition of the pattern, it is like this. And finally, my last figure is one dimensional case. This is one dimensional case. This is quasi one dimensional. So I assume that the frequency in the x direction is 10 times smaller than the frequency in the y direction. So up to 10 particles, I put all particles in the, along the line. 11 particle is the first one which goes in the perpendicular direction. And we, we will see it here. So we see for and here the only operation that I did up to this was shifting the center of mass to zero. So I, I will show maybe right now because this is this is one particle distribution. And one particle distribution you see some maxima here you don't see anything. There are some very, very small, everybody knows that, 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 that uh, if we add 100 mm -hmm. of Fermi polynomials, it will be smooth function which fits very well to Fermi Dirac solution with slightly tiny little oscillations. Fermi Thomas. Fermi Thomas Fermi, yes. With slightly uh, oscillations, and these maybe are somewhere there, but what I did here, I shifted in every realization the center of mass to zero, and, and you see, I come back to this, to this one. So this is 1, 3, 4, etc., 10, 11. 11 is like this, my algorithm, which was not enough shifting. Then I was doing inversion also, with respect to x and y axis. And this tends to symmetrize this, so I see that it makes some mistake in the recognition, but not big, because these two particles are slightly shifted. But, but, but slightly, they are not one on the top of the other. So that's how, this is not the best algorithm of pattern recognition. This is how made very trivial one. So I, I'm sure that experts could do it much better. And this is 12 particles. And we see that this is such a two triangles can be easily see. One, two, three, one, two, three. And this is 13 particles. So we see this, this triagonal structure is developed. So this is the second shell when we exceed this. this number of particles equal to 10. So now I want to say that Magda did also very nice results for three-dimensional harmonic oscillator. Here we don't know how to do this pattern recognition. It is difficult. I don't know, Magda, if I took probably, sorry, these are not the best no, no, figures you made. <laughs> but yesterday I didn't take the power, the, the power supply to my computer and I, I have what I had before. So this is one, three particles, four, but I mean, there is one in the center, ten, one in the center and, and nine here. And this is twenty, thirty-five, so here we have four and one, and shells are being 
form, so this is something which is for three-dimensional harmonic oscillator, the first feature, <coughs> Mike Zach has, has nicer, sorry. So now I want to, to, to finish with, with experimental perspective, is it possible to observe them? Uh, we are very skeptical and it's probably very difficult. But I talked to experimentalists and Immanuel Bloch told me I can do it right now. What people develop in the field of atomic physics is microscopes, atomic microscopes for observing atoms in optical lattices. And they have fluorescence microscopes with resolution which is of the order of 100 nanometers. This is enough to distinguish two sides of optical lattice. So we all at these conferences, we all in Kashi, it's called atom conferences, so very beautiful pictures of, of shining points jumping on a lattice, the, all these atoms, so, so they are monitored in situ, and there are several groups which have these microscopes with, with big resolution, and what Immanuel Bloch told me that the distance is slightly smaller than his resolution, because it is, they should put it in a tight optical lattice, to be sure that the first excited state is very, very high because they want to have the ground state. So, so they, they, they should have well separated single particle states. They can tune interactions, so it is no problem by flashback resonances to have this gas ideal. And then he said, I can open it a bit. And then I can use this microscope and he believes that he can observe it. So I hope that the that, that, uh, experiments will come. Well, if you fermion, you do not even need to, to tune interactions, they simply do not. They interact. simply, if they are identical, they do not interact, that, that's great. Of course, I don't know why, but they always say that these microscopes are harder to do for fermions, and that's I don't know why. Yeah, so there are some... But you want them to do it with fermions. He said that he will do it, but no, he promised our problem. Probably he will go for it because he has everything ready, just to take a picture, he has everything. And even very recently, he was observing the, the crystals of the Zrydberg atoms. So he had also this procedure of, 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 of pattern recognition ready because he published the paper that, this, that the Zrydberg atoms, that they have this, this exclusion volume, they also form such structures, and he published such paper recently. So, so I want to think that what is here done is that there are these ordered structures that we found in the grand state of ideal fermions that there is no any interaction. Typically when we have crystals, and crystals and order structures are known in physics. Uh, that all condensed matter is built on this crystal name structure. And, and this is everything due to interaction. What is strange here is that there are no interaction. No interaction at all. Ideal gas, nevertheless, we see that this indistinguishability somehow has very strange and, and peculiar way of, of presenting the in, in nature. So thank you. That's all. Thank you for your attention. What you are doing raises a very interesting mathematical question. You are telling us that if I give you a positive definite function yes. of uh, certain variables, then this function contains information that results in putting points Yes, I yes. in the plane, but first, which is very, very surprising. That but they, you've been working on vortices, and it was very similar problem. You had a function, and you were looking for zeros of this function, and they were vortices. That, yes, but this is, Here it is not no, any no, function. Yeah. This function is a square of anti-symmetric function. Now, this is very important constraint. For bosons, we wouldn't get this. Of course, there is a room for studying some different uh, representations of the permutation group because if we assume that we have spin we can have some particles in the same state some where function in position space is symmetric and some so there are different ways of this of this young tableau that we can also this is not what i meant so you are telling me that if i give you a function row which is just symmetric in all variables this is true for fermions and for mm -hmm. bosons then this function there are classes of these functions, you are telling, that contain information about the distribution of points that form some figure. And sure, this is, this is but there will be two classes. Nicely enhanced. No. Yeah. 
yes, then I, I, want want to say, I, I want to say that this, this is probably... Again, this crucial, this crucial. Yeah, well, I, it is surprising. It is important. What are important not assumptions the about yes. the function? I think that positivity is not enough and of symmetry course. is not enough yeah. because for bosons it's it's the same. So there are some other yeah. assumptions and this is very interesting it's mathematical not questions. Assumptions. Could you show again this crucial uh, slide? Which, which, which is crucial? <laughs> this one which we Whatever you choose. No, no. <laughs> this which you explain why it is so in this case. At the very beginning? Not at the very beginning, I think it was not. I don't, I, I, I am confused, Marek, which one? Okay, okay no, not this the, formula no, definitely there, not, not there. Not there. <laughs> Can I? I think, no, 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 there are 96. Like, when you rotate. 96. <laughs> when you make this rotation. Okay. Oh, rotation. Uh, uh, this? Oh. This, this is the one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is not any function. And this is a very important mathematical question. What are so assumptions which are required this for the function to yes. have this property? And what is strange, that I never found some isomers. So, in the case of this Coulomb potential in harmonic oscillator, some time program was going to some max minimum, which was not the global, so there were some number of local minima. Here, and, and then I could recognize it in my code, because I see that sometimes it almost, almost gets there, because then I see that, that it starts to make the shifts very, very, very small, that out of a sudden it jumps to some other position, the shifts are again big and so on. Here, it goes straight away, I run for the same uh, number of particles, the same code with totally different initial conditions many, many, many times and the only thing I discovered that they are rotating. But geometry is totally the same. So it is also strange that I believe that this function has up to the symmetry if we uh, know any uh, local maxima. Yes. It's very, it's very strange, maximum. There is very strange function. But this information must be also contained for in various correlations. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it for, is, sure. Uh, for, for sure. For example, if you look at the pair correlation function sure. for many part for many fermions, mm -hmm. then if you look at the second and third maximum, yeah. Yeah. They, they are, they are yeah. different tiny little yes. shifts yes. which you can calculate and which are yeah. related to the symmetries of I, the I never plotted it because I there are too many figures. So but we have also the histograms of distance. I have an never plotted, but then you will see some maxima and then some rows and, and, and then you will see some stress. So this is the simplest because this is nothing less like two body correlation, right? Calculating distances and, 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 and producing histogram. So this has some information. It tells me about number of shells, for instance, because I see one maxima yes. and the other, so I know there are two shells. Or if particles is at the zero because so, so, so it is. Can I ask a futuristic question? Yes, yes. Uh, Most welcome. In this building, there are people who are studying a Fermi surface for many mm -hmm. semiconductors. And these Fermi surfaces and the Fermi spheres are known in the K space. So the orbitals out of which you build this picture are known. And those Fermi surfaces are, they are even called monsters. They look terrible, right? Would that be possible to repeat your procedure for some be, realistic crystal? It will be challenging to do it, probably, yes. I am what, they, what they, we were they, thinking, they have those bases yeah. of the functions, yeah. right? What we were thinking, just to, to have it simpler, is to take some var variational functions for whole effect that are very well known, and for fractional whole effect. Yeah, that very uh, this is the Coulomb, Coulomb crystal wave function on the... So take a Jastro function or a Laughlin function. Laughlin function. And, well, they, they are, and they definitely, I have found a sign of this, that this is slightly known in the book of Maciek Levenstein, that when they were studying 10 <laughs> particles in the whole state, that there are ordered structures. There is such a, looking into two body or correlation functions, they say that there are some ordered structures <coughs> in this whole uh, state from, from his solution. So, so people probably know that this, but it's and interesting to compare, for instance, fractional whole effect, and there are different ansatzes, ansatz, 
when, when I have analytic expression for when, when by the uh, wave function, yeah. then of course it should work. And, 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 but, but then, so the last so that function is, yeah, will yeah, be a yeah. very natural candidate for the first. And then of course we can also switch interactions, like triangular interactions that Kajic studied. And to see when these structures, which are determined by statistics, become the structures determined by interaction, because what we have shown that Wigner crystals because are different. So at some moment the interactions take in some take over. Sense the Lafayette function what? is your old calculations for Coulomb yes, crystals, yes. but in two dimensions, yes. right? Yes. Yes. What yes. about an ordinary atom? Yes. An electron atom. What What happens when we apply yeah. your procedure? We we were looking for position of maximum, not trying to generate an ensemble and to see if we can recognize them from collection of pictures. But, but there is, there is, I, I, uh, we have for some small numbers beryllium. We wanted to go to carbon, but then when you put electrons into the Coulomb wave functions, if you want to have ground state. You have you have the spin, and that was discovered that the spin is needed yeah. because you can, you can put two yeah. electrons in one state, and then the wave function is symmetric. So we have developed a code which takes into account the other symmetry, the total anti-symmetry of the wave function. But but there are these different representations of permutation group and different Young tableau, and then what we notice that that this is too simple because the bosons, because these two which have the same wave function, special wave function, opposite spin, they from the point of view of geometry behave like bosons. They tend to stay at the same point. So any tiny impulsive interaction will change geometry drastically. So we have to <coughs> go slightly beyond the non-interacting model of, of atom to include some Correlations, at least for those electrons which occupy the same orbital. Then we should add some tiny repulsion in order to prevent them from uh, stacking at the same point, which we know that they are interacting by Coulomb forces and it is not possible. So that's why we, for some moment, stopped this direction looking into the Coulomb wave function. With atoms, I can have larger spin than one half. So I can put three or four. Four, you know, because they are they are they are fermions, but I can put four particles in the same state. So so I can study different parastatistics also with, with atoms. But one remark about the Coulomb: for the Coulomb potential, uh, the, the 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 shell structure is quite prominent because there is different exponent in the expression for the hydrogen wave function for n equal one, n equal two, n equal three. There are several scales of distance which, which, which differ slightly, therefore the <coughs> shell structure is, as here, it was not determined, determined, the structure was not determined by the structure of energy shells, the shells were different. Here, in Coulomb atom, the, the energy shells will be visible in geometrical structures because of, of, of slower decay of the wave function with n equal 2 than n, than n equal 1. So, so we have some preliminary results, but because we found them not too realistic as having two, two electrons at the same point, we postponed it for well, some time. you can break this uh, spin symmetry by putting this in a magnetic field. You yes, magnetic yes, yes, because in order to, have, yes, uh, <coughs> but, but I wanted to say that if we want to have for this real atom, this, 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 this repulsion, we, can, we have to go beyond single state and determinant approach. Single to mean field will not help because they still will have the same orbital. We will modify orbital due to the interaction with other, but in order to have uh, realistic, something realistic, it has to be in a multi state and determinant approach, multi configurational method to have at least superposition. It's not so hopeless. Some, some simple. We looked into quantum chemist book and there are at least some simple variational answers uh -huh. which, which give this correlation, which can be included somehow. So take two and there is not so much. Just any tiny which does for light atoms. For light atoms, of course. Yeah, for light atoms. Okay, and then what are the questions? Thank you.